Hello, my name is Shelley Hollis, and I am the Assistant Director of the Research and Curriculum Unit's Center for Cyber Education at Mississippi State University. We've been working closely over the past several years with the Mississippi Department of Education to get computer science into all the schools across the state and at all grade levels. In this time of social distancing and being conscious of the need for us all to do our part in slowing the spread of the COVID-19 virus, we're, we know that many of you are finding yourself at home with students who need some activities uh, to stay engaged with their learning. So in partnership with the Mississippi State Alumni Association, we would like to provide you with some suggestions uh, for computer science activities that can, uh, students can do from home that will support their skills in problem solving, critical thinking, computational thinking, creativity, uh, programming, as well as math and reading. In this short video, we're gonna show you some sites that are very student friendly, they're very easy to navigate, and best of all, they're free and a lot of fun. Students will really enjoy spending some time in these activities. So hang with me for a few minutes and let's explore what's available. So the first site I'd like to show you is actually um, the site that we maintain here at Mississippi State University in partnership with the Department of Education on the computer science courses and resources that we uh, use in the classroom and that are we just want to make, make available to parents and students. Um, so that website is cs4ms.org and the page I have you uh, on now is free resources and tools to use at home. This is something that we've created just for this, this time to um, show you the links for the resources we're going to look at today. The first one we're going to examine is code.org and it is a nonprofit organization that has created tools and resources for students across the world to get them interested in computer science and to make it accessible for all students. And we use a good deal of their curriculum and material in our uh, classrooms during the school year, uh, all the way from elementary through high school. So the first thing I want to show you is just a page that code.org has created. Uh, and this is where the, the link will, will take you. And this is just something they've put together to give you some resources to use while you're at home with your students. Uh, this first part here is Hour of Code activities. These are all activities that can be completed within an hour or less. And there are lots of uh, activities you can find uh, if you click on this um, Many More Tutorials link around uh, Minecraft, Star Wars, Frozen, uh, and for various age ranges uh, and different kinds of activities to um, meet different kinds of interests that kids may have. We're going to look at the dance party activity where students can code characters on the screen to dance uh, to, to music. Uh, so we'll, we'll take a look at that one. And then we'll also, um, while we're on, on this page, I'll go ahead and show you the other things that are available. There's some video series on how computers work and how the internet works, and that might be an interesting thing for your, your students to go through. Um, then there's also full courses that they can experience, again, based on their age level. So there's a course for 9 through 18 year olds, and then there's a course for ages 4 to 8. And in these courses, your students should create an account so that they can log on each day and their work is saved. And the accounts are all free, um, and they can also work in the app lab just to play around. There's nothing um, formatted or structured here just uh, for them to experience some things. And you can see some other uh, tools and resources they've, they've listed here. So what I'm going to show you is um, first the uh, dance party, the hour of code activity that they can do within, a, within an hour, and then we'll look at some of the pre-reader uh, material for your younger students. So let's first go and take a look at the dance party. So when you click on the link um, for dance party, it takes you to this page and you just simply come here and click start. Once you click start, uh, the first thing that usually pops up with these activities is a video, and there'll be videos throughout the, the puzzles and activities. Um, and these videos are really great for students to watch. Not only do they provide information about how the screens are arranged and where students can look for instructions and so forth, but they also give some information on um, the skills that are coming up and some helpful tips on, on, on understanding how to use those uh, particular skills or implement those skills. But the other thing that I find really valuable about the videos is that they're all done by people who are currently working in the computer science industry. So it gives students an opportunity to see and hear from people who are doing this kind of work and they get to uh, realize and understand that computer science isn't just about working for a company like Microsoft or uh, IBM or Google, but uh, there are lots of different ways computer science is used in every career field. The first video shows uh, a woman who is using computer science um, 
with a dance group that she um, she manages. So we're going to watch a couple of minutes of this video so you can get an idea and then we'll go on to the activity itself. Hi, my name is Mural Kodbi and I'm a dancer, software developer, and creator of Illuminate. Computer science relates to creativity in numerous ways, immeasurable really. I mean, once you have the ability to write software, you can put ideas into anything. I do it with light suits. There's so much you can do once you have the tools to write software and it's, the possibilities are really endless. So that's a quick um, insight into what the videos are like. Um, and then a lot of times the code.org uh, puzzles will ask your student to put in their age. And this is just simply for them to understand what age group of students are, are going through the activity. So we can pick an age, click OK. And now you'll see the actual puzzle screen. And most all of the activities that you do within code.org will be arranged similarly with an instruction space at the top, a play space or a preview space on the, the left, uh, an area in the center where you've got commands or tools or blocks that you can use. You can think of this as the toolbox. And then a workspace where you drag tools from the tool toolbox into the workspace to actually create a program. So we'll go through this first puzzle here just to give you an example. And you can see that they give you hints and tips in various places. So our instructions are to drag the make a new cat block into the workspace and connect it inside the setup block. And it also tells you that you can choose cat or sloth from this drop down menu and here you can also change where the, the cat or sloth would be positioned on the screen once you hit the run button. We're just going to leave things as they are. We're going to drag this block over and you can see how it clicks. You can see that little yellow highlight in the setup block um, and it just clicks together like a puzzle piece. And so once you have gotten that together you can come over and click run. Also notice that the students can choose from different songs these are all songs that have been approved to be appropriate for students. And so they can choose uh, whatever song they might like. We'll just leave it with the song that's chosen and I'll hit run. Can't nobody tell me nothing. And then it will tell you that you've uh, completed your puzzle and you can click continue to move on to the next. And you'll see there another video pops up. Um, you don't get it in between every activity or every puzzle, but there are several in here. and it works to introduce the next set of skills that students will need. So we're going to switch from this to um, looking back at one of the, um, the courses that code.org has for younger students. And this is the Pre-Reader Express. So this is the ages four to eight. Uh, so you may have students here that aren't quite reading yet. Uh, so these are puzzles that would be appropriate for that group of students. And you can see here they're simply learning about using the mouse and how drag and drop uh, works on a computer. So their instructions are simply to click the block. So they just click the block and they've completed that puzzle. And the next puzzle is a little, uh, another step. Now they need to drag the block to the target. So we click OK to say that we've read the instructions. Then we click on the block and we drag it to the target. And now you've completed puzzle two. So you can see these are very simple puzzles for younger students. The next resource I'd like to show you is uh, a little more um, for a little more advanced. There aren't as m many instructions and, and guided uh, areas with Scratch, but Scratch is a great resource for um, kids to bring stories to life. For instance, it's a it's an animation programming space and so you could have your students write a story you know just three or four paragraphs um, and then come to scratch and use scratch to animate it to tell their story it might be a fun project to even um, at the end of the day or if it takes them a couple of days to get it written and animated at the end of the week come together with a family and let them show their story that they've created so again here's uh, another place where you would want to let them create a free account so that they can save their work and work on this a little bit each day. I'm going to just go straight into the create space and not, not have an account. Uh, so that's also a possibility. But if you wanted to have them uh, create an account, you just click on join and, and fill out the little simple information that's there. So we're going to go to create. And it will open up a space uh, similar to what we saw in code.org, just slightly arranged differently. They do have an opening tutorial that we, we won't watch. 
uh, but your, your students can go through that tutorial. I'm going to go ahead and close that. But you have your, your toolbox sections here. This is a section that gives you different tools. So right now we're on the motion tool. So you see these are all the commands that have to do with motion. And then these are all the commands that have to do with looks, sound, events, etc. Um, and I will tell you that this, this event here, when green flag click, that's the event we're going to use almost always to begin our programs. This is your working space where you drag the blocks to build your program. This is your preview space where you'll see the characters perform the actions you program them to do. And here's where you can choose different characters. So right now, the programs always start out with the cat sprite. Uh, we're going to choose a, a second sprite just so I can show you how that works. So we click there and we'll pick the beetle. So again, you just click down here to choose a new sprite. There's also options that you can draw your own. Uh, but so now we have a sprite, uh, a beetle sprite and a cat sprite or, or characters. And I can move them around up here in my, my play space to put them at different starting positions. And you'll notice that whichever one I, I click on is highlighted down here. So if I click on the cat and move the cat around, it highlights down here. And this is also important because whichever one is highlighted here is the one that the code that we write will apply to. So right now I'm going to be programming the cat character. So to begin any program in Scratch, you have to click this green, green flag. Now that's the most common way to begin a program. So the first command we want to use is in the events block. And we want to use when green flag is clicked. And let's just say we want our cat to move across our, our preview space. So I'm going to go back to the motion uh, commands and I'm going to choose a move command. And 10 steps is not very much. So I'm going to put in 100 steps. And this is a great place for kids to play around and see what happens when they change these numbers. Try different, uh, try different numbers and see how that impacts the programming. And so now if I click my green flag, my cat moved forward 100 steps. So I'm going to pull him back to his starting place. And now I'm going to add some programming for my beetle. And again, I need to tell the beetle when to begin his programming. So I'm going to go back to my events. I get that when green flag is checked. I can go back to motion because I want him to move as well. But I'm going to have him just go to some random position on the screen. And again, you see there's a drop down here, so I could choose something different. I could choose mouse pointer, or I can make him go to the same location as the first sprite. But I'm going to let it stay random. And so now when I click my green flag, both characters will move. And the beetle moved randomly up there. Now if I put them back into position and click it again, you see the beetle move to a different place. Um, now the last thing I'll show you on this, because this is the fun part about animating, is having the characters talk to one another. So I um, clicked on my cat, so I can now I'm going to program what my cat is going to say. And speaking is under looks. So you can pull out the say hello for two seconds. And now my cat is going to say hello. I don't want my beetle to be rude, so I'm going to have him pull. I'm going to have him say something as well. Pull out the same block, but I'm going to change this. Instead of saying hello, I'm going to have the beetle say, "How are you?" And that's um, so. Now they both have speaking parts, so I can click my green flag. They move and they speak. So that's a very simple program that kids could create to animate a story. The next activity uh, or, or resource I wanted to show you is for those of you who might not have access to a computer or to internet. And these activities are called unplugged activities. And these are things your students can do um, just based on paper if you, if you can print these out. Um, if, you don't have, if you don't have internet access or don't have a, a device that the students can work on, there's lots of different activities here that teach computational thinking and computer science skills without having to have a computer. And again, we also use these during the school regular school year um, for, for students to learn uh, in, off the computer. So I'm going to show you a sample activity about text compression, but you can see you have many to choose from here. Um, the text compression activity looks like this. It's just a Microsoft Word document uh, or a, a PDF, um, and you can print that off. Uh, it, you should be able to print it at the library or, or um, some sort of copy store. Um, so text compression is just teaching them about the fact that we need um, we need to uh, change the size of a lot of data so that we have enough room to store it. And by 
coding, we can change the size of data and then being able to decode it when it's retrieved. And so the first activity they, uh, they do is just experiencing, uh, looking for patterns in words, because where there's patterns, we can create a character or a code of some sort to represent that pattern, and then it takes up less storage space. So you can notice here in pitter patter, there's the pattern of T-T-E-R in both words. And so those four letters can be replaced with a single character or symbol. And so that's what this activity is teaching them. Um, and so there's several, several things to do here and they get a little more complicated as it goes on. And then the last resource I wanted to show you is called uh, Common Sense Media. And they, this site has a, a lot of great resources for parents, not only about computer science, but about math and reading and um, science and history, as well as giving you, uh, given a place for parents to look at reviews and ratings on books and movies and games and TV shows. So you can see here um, that they have lots of uh, information for parents so that you can find things that are age appropriate and um, also you can find out what what might be in the book or in the movie that you might be concerned about for your student to see and give you some ratings and information. But they, they have information here and they even give you some um, suggested schedules uh, about uh, how to, to spread out your day and do things different things on the computer. And one of the things I really like is they actually um, th put in their activity time. So they give you some um, things still that are on the computer, but it's to get the kids up and moving. So I really liked that they were thinking about getting the kids uh, up and, and active. So those are the resources that we, we wanted to share, share with you. And again, you can find them all at the cs4ms.org website. And the links to each one of the, the resources that we looked at today are, are listed here. So I hope you found this helpful. We hope you all stay safe and that you enjoy this time with your, um, with your students and that you're all able to learn together. Thank you.